Hey, look out. It's Faith Talk Live. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. We love this guy. He's so humble, and he really is. He's not just putting on a show, but I think we'd really like to talk to Patty Hambrick, but we've got... Uh, <laughs> not gonna happen. Not gonna she happen. wasn't available. I'm <laughs> in this show, so that's all we're going to get. Maybe we could text or email or something uh, for the next show, but John Hambrick is uh, a great second. John, how are you? Doing well. Nice to see you guys. Good to see you. Uh, John is a pastor, writer, communicator, and uh, still all around good guy. Yeah. Yeah. At home, just like Dan and I. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Homebound. Now, would you be opposed to doing that from now on? I mean, Dan and I are pretty, we kind of love this and we've been doing it since what, March something, something, and we kind of enjoy it. Yeah, that's that's the same. We we all went home to start working from home about mid-March. So, you know, um, I think going forward, you know, regardless of how the virus plays out, I could see working from home about 60% of the time. Being with folks down at the office is important given my job description, but uh, yeah. I'm getting a lot done. I'm getting, and I don't have to commute up and down Georgia 400. So that's yeah, yeah. a lot of time and energy. That saves you hours and hours a week, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It saves me two hours a day. Yes. You know, we say uh, when we're going home, you know, with 50,000 of my closest friends, we say we're not racing, <laughs> but we really are. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Not to mention, and it's the same for Dan and I, John, not only the traffic, the time, but it's the money for us. Uh, I mean, you know, it, we've saved a lot of money just driving around our little, little towns there. Well, Dan doesn't drive much on the beach. (laughs) Yeah, uh, yeah, right. (laughs) And how, why didn't we get to do this interview at that beach? Dan? Well, it's a very exclusive private beach. (laughs) <laughs> uh, they, they heard about Rick's reputation, so they said, nah, maybe well, not. If Patty came with me, would that get me in? Patty, well, she's like, she's she'd in. have her own place back, yeah. right back here, right back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't like the way that I, you know, I'm busy. It's been great talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah Patty, Patty's in, and, and John, not quite yet. <laughs> not, not quite yet. You know, John, you bring up an interesting thing. Now, uh, it's no surprise because it's been all over the news media. I think I was driving in the car when I heard that uh, Buckhead Church, along with North Point, all the, the North Point churches basically, yep, um, uh, gonna gonna do virtual until 2021, yep. which I think is smart, right? Because you're dealing with people. But you you bring up a a point that Dan and I Dan and I have talked about a lot. Uh, we miss each other. Uh, we miss connecting with people. Um, it it's just tough. So. How are you guys working that out uh, with that that whole dynamic? A lot of small group meetings probably, huh? Yeah, yeah. So first of all, I want to say I think Andy made a great call. Um, I think that was, you know, it was it was a somewhat of a controversial call, but I think it was right on the money. Well, we're the way we're thinking. But, but So here's the deal. Um, we are not thinking about what to do for the next six months because we think the church culture in which all the churches in America existed on March 8th, which I'm using that, that was the last day we worshiped in our building. We think that culture is pretty much gone. And so what we're working on uh, within the North Point campuses is what, how do we recalibrate the church for the next six years? So we're trying to take a little bit of a long-term perspective. And we think if we, um, if we can think that way, we think we'll obviously make some good calls in the short term as well. But we're, we are, uh, you know, we, I think a lot of people think in a binary fashion, like, well, we're either fully on or we're fully off. Right. Um, we don't think that way. We think there's gradations between those two. And we also think, and if you caught Andy on uh, CNN uh, last week, I think it was, um, we are still very active. You know, we're constantly reaching out to people online. And then in terms of uh, the things we do to support the community, our, our Intersect partners, we are moving forward uh, with unabated uh, energy and momentum. And we just think this is a great chance uh, to serve the community, which we can do whether we're meeting in a church in a building or not. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I got this, I got this feeling, John, that uh, like some of the other things, you know, Andy's been able to step out way before a lot of other folks and probably taken criticism. Okay, took criticism, and uh, successfully 
uh, connected with people that other people weren't connecting with so that, you know, a lot of people gleaned from that afterward. I got a feeling we're kind of doing the same thing in a sense is that you guys as a team moving forward. And, and at first, right. If, if you think historically or uh, just think the way that we've been doing it for so long, it's like, ah, I don't know if that's going to work or not, but you know what? In a few years, we'll probably be doing the same thing and saying, man, that was the best decision we ever made. Well, you know, God's very clever in that sense, right? He'll take, uh, he doesn't cause disasters, obviously, but there'll be some sort of cataclysmic disaster. And uh, God leverages that to help the church reform, to evolve, to, to be a better fit with the new emerging culture. So we think, you know, we feel horrible about the crises that have descended upon our culture, um, and we wish they were not here. But that said, we think there's a ton of opportunity within that context to recalibrate the church, um, to serve our city, our country, our people in Jesus's name. So yeah, it's hard, um, but there's lots of opportunity. And we're That's cool. John, do you think we've gotten, because uh, you said the, the model that we had March 8th, it, it's gone. It's going to be different. But I, I think we had gotten to a point where we had put so much emphasis on the big church building being the church rather than what God has in, intended for the church to be, which is the people, the church body. Right. Uh, do you think God might be using this to maybe get back to that a little bit? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think he's going to I think he is in the process of reorienting, reorienting the church in the United States anyway, um, to place the emphasis uh, on the people rather than on the program. And again, those are not opposite emphases. They right. will together, but we think he may be just readjusting the balance. Um, you know, it's Ephesians 4, you know, the pastors are supposed to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. um, we think we see a lot of opportunities in that regard going forward. And we're working to uh, make some paradigm shifts in that way. John Hambrick, uh, he is a pastor at Buckhead Church, also a writer and a communicator. Do you have anything in the hopper, John, that you're writing? Or are you just so busy with trying to uh, be a part of the flow that you guys are doing, which I would assume would take a huge amount of time and thinking through, uh, of course, praying and communicating to other people uh, to, to get it, you know, to run, uh, seamlessly if, I mean, seamlessly, you know, nothing runs seamlessly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but is there anything you're working on scribbling down? Yes. And so I, I get up, so I'm a musician originally. And as you guys know, cause I think one of you are too, if not both, um, you know, we're nighttime people, right? So yeah. when I started writing again, about seven years ago, I changed my routine and I am now a, a card carrying um, morning person. <laughs> I get crazy early because, you know, Buckhead, I'm so grateful for my job there, but they're not paying me to write. So I get up crazy early and that's when I write. My head's clear. You know, the, the cares of the day have not yet descended upon me. And yes, and I am writing something. It's called the museum. And it's a parable that is intended to help people to dis discern where they're stuck in their faith. Hmm. So, um, to be continued. I'll tell you, I hope I get a chance to tell you more about that soon, but yeah. You are such a tease, John, just yes, to, to throw it out there. I was excited. And you said to be continued. Oh, man. Well, I want to see if I see everything now, then this will be the last time you see me. Same, uh, okay. You know, okay. we got everything we can from that Hamrick dude. So <laughs> unless we can get to Patty through him, in which case we'll keep him around. We're, we're going to keep trying. That We've got the beach here ready for that. So <laughs> I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. That's right. <laughs> John Hambrick, you can read uh, his stuff that he's already written. And uh, where, where, where can they go? I, can't, I forget, Dan. Where's his website? Do we yeah, remember? Yeah, John, where, what's your website? Just, just go to Amazon. Just Amazon. go to and move toward the mess. Um and also the book I co-wrote with Tisha uh, called Black and White, Disrupting Racism, One Friendship at a Time. And what a great book for the time that we've been, yeah. uh, that we've been in in the past couple knew, of months. Who knew, John? Yeah. Who knew? Yeah, that, well, we didn't. We, uh, yeah. We're just sick about what's happened racially uh, mm -hmm. in the past few months. And we're hoping that um, we're hoping God can use the book to help just a wee little bit. Of course, there's a ton of great books out there. So we're, right. ours is just one of 
of many. Yeah. Um, He's so humble, but, uh, uh, we love hanging with him because uh, just because of his depth and his walk with Christ and he loves people so much, he wouldn't say it. So I'm going to say it for him mm-hmm. and uh, Patty as well. No yeah. doubt. <laughs> so I just want to go back for a second. We do have to go to a break, but with the stuff that you're, you're writing. And I love the fact that you write out of something that's coming out of your soul, but it's all, it's always something that will prog- progress people forward. It's not just something that goes, Hey, I want to make some extra money. Although mm-hmm. no doubt you, everybody needs extra money, but you always write out of the sense of building the kingdom, the church, the people and moving them forward. And, and that's so refreshing. And I'm grateful at the same time. Thank you. Thanks for saying that, Rick. I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm subject to the same uh, temptations. I mean, when you get, you know, tens and tens of dollars, like I do when you write a book. <laughs> Can't you just you know go nuts and you know buy a I don't know buy Bluetooth speakers or something? So I got to kind of rein myself in. He has a four-figure salary, Rick, and that includes the <laughs> decimal point. <laughs> we need to start a GoFundMe account for John Hambrick. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think is uh, next for um, the rest of us? Uh, you're busy about doing what you're doing, which is a part of us. Yeah, we're all but, together. But, but us as a culture, you think? I mean, we can include racism. We can include faith. We include economy. Where do you think? Can we sort this all out? I mean. Well, I I see, um, interesting you would ask. I, I see that our, our country is in the middle of four simultaneous, very serious crises. There's the COVID one. There's the economic one that was triggered by COVID. There's the racial crisis. And then I think what may be the most concerning to me personally long term is the vicious polarization that has characterized our public discourse. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, whether you're on the right or the left or in the middle, people are so angry and so vicious and so quick to accuse and label and vilify. And the problem with that is that vicious uh, polarization is really getting in the way of us dealing with the other three crises. Yeah. So we, you know, as believers, uh, we have to show up in that public discourse uh, and be kind and reasonable and loving. And uh, I think there's a tremendous opportunity uh, to bring a tone of reasonableness to those conversations, because right now all we're doing is uh, angering each other and we're not making any we're not making any progress as far as I can tell. Well said, John. Mm -hmm. I love that, John. I wish we could hear you speak more. Uh, can are you writing anything publicly, like blogs or anything? Because that, I mean, that's good stuff. Well, thanks. I, yeah, I write for um, you specialties. I write their blog. Write. I'm one of many authors who writes blogs for you specialties. Um, where can they go to? Where can we go to read that? You specialties blog. And Have you touched on anything like that? Or are you going in that direction? Or well, in that blog, that's pretty much about. Uh, student ministry. And, you know, I did, I worked with high school kids for 19 years, so I'm kind of on on that past experience there, but um, yeah, you know, we're always putting feelers out. So um, we'll see what happens. You're still a high school student at heart, aren't you? Yes. This is a uh, 15 year old trapped in an ancient. (laughs) You and me both, buddy. Yeah. Well, I (laughs) have to be good. So. (laughs) <laughs> pastor John Hambrick, pastor, writer, communicator, uh, musician, and a friend of, of us, a dear friend. We love him so much. And uh, I'm voting for uh, John for president in 2020. So if Amen. you're with me, yep. let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So I got two votes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, but Patty's pulling out, you know, so maybe we'll, get- yeah, well, we'll work on her. <laughs> John, thank you for your time. You're you're such a blessing to us and blessing to so many people. We we'd love to catch up with you again in a couple of months and uh we we pray for you and believe in you and and we'll connect back with you. Let's take a break. We'll be back. I'm Rick Probst and I'm Dan Ratcliffe. This is yeah.